is up? My name is Matt Workman and welcome to Cinetracer version 0.62. Allow me to take you through some of the changes and additions. The first big change here is that we've continued to add new maps. This is using what we've built on from Forest 1 and I've made a sand dunes map, another forest with some ruins, and then my favorite, a winter road scene. So what I want to show here really quickly is the new way that we're going to move assets in Cinetracer. So I'm going to go get the car. I'm grabbing this car and I'm going to place it about here. We select the car and what happens is that based on where you're viewing the object from, so this is the key point, this is based on the camera. If I press up and down on the arrow keys, that's going to move the object away from you and towards you. So up is moving it away from you. In theater or stage, this is called upstage. And if you use the arrow key down, that's going to move it towards you. And it's relative to the camera view. So it's not relative to the object, not relative to the world. It's relative to the way you're viewing it from. So if I come over here and I think, hey, I want that object to be closer to me, I push the down arrow key, which is facing you, or I want it further away. Likewise, or similar, the left arrow key is now, if you go to the left, if I hit the left arrow key, moves it to the left of the camera. In this case, you could consider it camera left, some people say, or stage. No, I guess it's audience left. I don't know how you do it in stage. But anyway, if I go right, it goes right. I think it's something like 10 centimeter increments. It's just a little bit at a time. This is an experiment. I think it's what makes sense to me as a simple and intuitive way of moving something around. If you don't want to do the gizmo, which has been updated, we'll look at that in a second. So let me know what you think about that in the comments here or on Instagram, YouTube, Instagram. That's basically all I have the bandwidth for again for feedback. Now there's another one. If you hold shift now and you press up, the object goes up. This is world space, which is a little bit different, but it's basically always going to be up in the scene. If you spin the object, it will still go up in the world. And again, that's what I think makes the most sense intuitively. So what you would do is like, hey, let's put this into the ground for some reason. I'm not sure why you move it a little bit that way. Maybe even the director's like, can we move it left a little bit? And so it's relative to the way you're viewing it, except for up and down. So that is the new update for um, moving things. And let me take you through the new way that gizmos work. So one thing that's different now is that as I zoom back like this, the gizmo is actually getting bigger and it's attempting to stay the same size percentage in the screen. This was not how it worked before, I believe. So basically you would get close to objects and it would be gigantic and you would get far away from objects and it would be tiny. So this is fixing that system. Now, the way that gizmos used to work is the way that they, we attempted, I attempted to write it so that it would work like it would in your normal 3D um, DCC or like Unreal Engine, right? So what you would do is you would click on this arrow and you would drag it in the direction that it's pointing. And that's the most intuitive, but the way that I wrote it wasn't very good and it would jump off screen a lot. So the way that I've changed this for now, and I'm really open for feedback, I'm trying to make the most intuitive system and also most consistent, which is the consistency is the big one for me. What you do now is you click on the arrow and that's gonna show you the direction it's gonna move. But what you do now is you'll see we have a new little UI and it says to move your mouse right and left. So if you move it right, it's gonna go up in value on blue, which is Z. But I don't really try to expose that stuff to you. Uh, when you go left, it goes the opposite direction. Now this is always relative to the object. So it's not always intuitive which way you should drag, but what is more intuitive, hopefully, and more consistent is that this will never just shoot off the screen into perspective um, is when that was happening. You really just pick it and you move your mouse until you're like, eh, like that, cool. Same thing with this one. Again, in this case, if I move my mouse to the right, it will move that way, but that's not always the case, right? So you're gonna move your mouse side to side, click and drag, pick an arrow and move it side to side. It's no longer moving it in the direction of the arrow, like you'll see here, it's always side to side. So really what that is like is a value slider. If you've ever worked in Maya or Unreal Engine, it's essentially a value slider, except tied to clicking on an arrow. And I hope that's more consistent and is a better way of doing it. I am open to, for feedback on that. Now where it really works, I believe, is for the rotations. Now the rotations 
also were fraught with issues. This one is a little bit better. Um, so I'll show it for now. So before this was doing a much different calculation. It was doing something kind of crazy behind the scenes. It was made sense when I wrote it, but now it doesn't as much. This is the same thing. You're going to click on which one of the directions you want to rotate. And all you do is you move your mouse side to side and it will actually tell you in degrees. It doesn't say degrees, but it'll tell you in degrees how much you've moved it. Right. And so this is actually the building towards a more uh, deterministic way of moving and rotating things that we don't have yet, where say you wanted to move this and rotate it 45 degrees, you would then be able to like type it in or something like that. Um, but if nothing else, these rotations are more consistent now. So again, you're going to pick which axis you want, move your mouse right and left, and these will not jump around at all. Really, they shouldn't. So in my opinion, they've lost a little bit of intuitive intuitiveness because they don't like you don't move your mouse in the direction, the right direction every time. That's something I'm uh, maybe going to work towards as far as implementing. But what it does allow you to do is tweak the adjustments and have them be um, consistent and not jump around. So let me know what you think about this. This car UI, this car, car vehicles need like a, a wreath. I think at all. I haven't worked on vehicles very much. Been obviously working on cameras quite a bit, and this is general system, and we're doing environments, nexus, kind of props, and then maybe uh, lighting. There's going to be some new stuff that's available in 4.26, which is the Unreal Engine version. Um, uh, this is where we're at right now. So you're okay. So we have our car here, and what I want to do is just kind of show the system working together like this. So I'm going to put this here and I'm going to switch to overcast, which for this scene just looks like absolutely great. I mean, this is perfect. And if you wanted to adjust how much haze there is back there, that is haze density, which uh, these need like a UI overhaul to kind of explain what's happening and maybe simplification and more presets that aren't ugly buttons. But you know, it does function, <laughs> uh, but that could be updated. But what I want to show now is the the gizmos in action and I do use this program quite a bit. I'm going to be using it more once we have uh, the new human stuff in there. And so I am going to change the beam angle uh, like this. So it's a little bit more controlled. And again, I'm just going to move this side to side like this until it's here. And then I'm going to go up. Oops. That's, the, that's a way I'm going to hold shift and move it straight up in the world like that. Okay. So grabbing this arrow again, moving it here, moving it maybe like this, like this here. And, uh, you know, for better or for worse, this is the way to add headlights in there. Uh, lighting, dynamic lighting is expensive. So to put lights in the actual car, it's a thought, but is kind of expensive where this does sort of work. I'm going to hit C and for this object that, that still works. And we're going to scoot this back here. And this car is off in an angle. So again, it's, it's a little bit of a, a process to get it here. But hopefully now these gizmos aren't going to jump around, even though it might take a little bit to get there. Uh, they're not like as intuitive as I would say, like, you know, professional gizmos that have been written for other programs. Uh, they do work uh, I'll, as far as uh, being able to move them around still working on making them uh, a little bit more uh, intuitive now that they kind of function. Uh, making them so that like the direction you pull them would be great. Um, and then finally, uh, I hear it quite a bit is undo. And it's something I've actually had to do like a lot of research into, like from a programming standpoint, how to actually write that. And I have like the beginnings of being able to test that soon ish. Uh, not quite ready to put it in there, but it's something that I'm working towards. It is kind of like a, as you might imagine, like an entire system kind of like overhaul to be able to do that. But I'm gonna hit tab and just line up this shot here. That's kind of cool actually with the, um, I don't know, with the edge light from those, I think that's pretty nice. Gonna jump out and just wanted to do uh, a little bit of a scene demo in here. Really recommend going into overcast. And I would love for people to try this out. And then on Instagram, you know, especially where I, where I mainly look, uh, you know, send screenshots from this to make sure that it works, you know, on Mac and different computers and PC. So I'm going to hold shift and press up, which is a little bit easier sometimes little, little increments like that. And maybe is a little bright overall. So I'm just going to type in like 50, hop back in here. 
And there we are for uh, this snow scene. I think that looks pretty nice. And this is again without ray tracing even. So I'm gonna make a little camera move. I'm gonna hold two. This is just going over this new camera system. This is where we're gonna end. And oh, you know what I need to do? I'm going to hold left click and we're gonna set the tracked point. That's gonna work like that. Now I'm gonna actually hit two and it should bring me back because I just wanna move straight back essentially uh, and kind of keep her in the frame where she is there. So not quite, maybe something like this. The frame is there. Maybe I'll scoot in from about here like that. Gonna hold one. I don't know about this wide frame, but we'll see. Gonna hit tab and hit two and we're gonna scoot in. So pretty nice. <laughs> in my opinion, I guess I am biased, but this map um, represents uh, just like the kind of new quality uh, that we can hit for Cinetracer pre-made maps. And uh, for quite a while, I was really trying to make it work so that we would be able to build these maps in game. Uh, I would still love for that to be the case, but it's not quite there. Uh, yeah, and even if it does, um, what I realized after talking with a lot of users is that even if we could build this sort of thing in game is that most people or a lot of people do not have the time to do that or the knowledge or the interest, right? So there was, um, you know, again, from feedback, people were very interested in having pre-made maps so that it can happen quickly. It's like forests, uh, interiors are a little harder in cities. I'm cities will probably want to be the next one that we do using uh, this exact same system uh, and start to rebuild the maps we used to have in this better way. Uh, so again, I'm very interested if you can hop in this map, test it out, tell me how the performance is, especially if you're on say like kind of like a low powered MacBook Pro with an Intel GPU or something like that, or even an old, uh, older uh, PC, uh, PC system. Would love to know how these maps are running. I am working hard uh, to keep them so that they're not overwhelming to people's systems. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next update.